Worried about gout? Check out Ural, the effective urinary alkalinizer. Ural, neutralize your uric acid problem now. Welcome to Kidney News. I'm your host Prasad. Zafril and Kairi will need to make their way to Parliament soon to answer to the Public Accounts Committee on what's happening with my Sajatra. The Public Accounts Committee will summon Finance Minister Thinku Zafrul Abdul Aziz and Health Minister Kairi Jamaluddin over the government's plans for the My Sajatra application. In a statement today, PAC Chairperson Wonka Wo said matters concerning My Sajatra must be explained in a transparent manner. He said this is because it involved government procurement and the safety of personal data. The PAC is an influential bipartisan committee with an explicit mandate to scrutinize government finances. It has the power to summon witnesses for hearings and provide feedback to which government agencies must respond to. All PAC reports must be tabled in the Dewan Rakyat and are available for public scrutiny, including proceeding transcripts. Interest in Master Jatra grew following the tabling of the PAC's report on the ministerial follow-up action on March 24th. The report details the responses of government ministries to the committee's earlier report titled COVID-19 Vaccine Procurement and Utilisation. In the March 24th report, the PAC had objected to Putrajaya's decision to enter negotiations with my SJ Sindirian Burhat on a deal to what would allow the company to maintain the MySajatra platform. Among other concerns, the PAC pointed out that MySJ was a different entity from KPI Soft Malaysia, now known as Entomo Malaysia, which developed the MySajatra application. After Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, We've got more slapping action here in Malaysia. Two Prasarana employees will now have to face the music for assaulting an alleged thief who took two Maggi cups without paying. Two men believed to be employees of Prasarana Berhad have found themselves in trouble after they were caught on camera roughing up an individual who allegedly stole two instant noodle cups from a 7-Eleven in Cheras. The public transport company has said that they are investigating the incident as such an act violates its work ethics. Prasarana said it takes the matter seriously. Several short video clips of the incident started making their rounds on social media yesterday evening. It showed a man clad in an auxiliary police uniform with a Prasarana logo scolding an individual inside the convenience store. The individual allegedly did not pay for two cups of instant noodles because he didn't have money and he was hungry. Another man clad in a red rapid shirt then joined in, telling the alleged thief to pay for the noodles before smacking him on his head. The Charas District Police are expected to issue a statement on the case soon. A lecturer's rant about a student's financial situation has landed her in hot water. Hanya 800 saja beli komputer. Apa masalah kau? Pasal itu aku tak boleh duduk orang dengan B40 ya. Dia lebih memikirkan pasal lain daripada pelajaran. Those were the words of a university technology mara lecturer aimed at a student who reportedly could not afford a laptop. Now UITM said it will be taking action against the lecturer after the viral video circulated on social media. UITM Vice Chancellor Rosia Muhammad Jano said the university is investigating the contract lecturer in question and disciplinary action will be taken against her. The lecturer in the video is attached to the UITM Siri Iskandar Perak campus and teaches at the Faculty of Architecture, Planning and Surveying. Rosia added that the student in the video has been identified and the university has provided the necessary equipment to him. Rosia also said that the investigated individual was a good lecturer and there might have been a mistake in how she addressed the situation. Chinese ships have been rather busy lately, so busy they've encroached into Malaysian waters more than 20 times in 2021. Here's what Malaysia is doing about it. Chinese vessels were found to have encroached into Malaysian waters 23 times last year. Defence Minister Hishamuddin Hussein revealed this in parliamentary reply to Jilao MP Larry Sung. He said the Royal Malaysian Navy, via its surveillance, recorded 23 cases of encroachment by Chinese state assets in the Malaysian Maritime Zone. He added that the encroachment of the People's Republic of China, namely the China Coast Guard, 
was detected in the country's waters since 2013. Sung also asked what actions were being taken by Malaysia in defending its sovereignty. Hishamuddin said the Navy has deployed its warships together with ships sent by the Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency to strengthen the sovereignty of the country via several operations. PSB is one MP short now that Masir Kujat has decided to support the BN-led federal government instead. Sri Aman MP Masir Kujat has quit Parti Sarawak Bersatu. In a statement today, he also declared support for Prime Minister Isma Sabri Yaakob's administration. Masir said he will remain as an independent lawmaker given that the parliamentary term will end in a year. With this decision, he hopes the government will channel equal allocation to him as what the government lawmakers receive. He said since he joined PSB in 2019, he had a very limited source of funds to cater for the development of his constituency. He hopes that by supporting the BN government, he will get some allocation for the next one year to service his area. Master also believes that the best way forward is to put politics aside to stabilise and rebuild the nation. Malaysia Kini has attempted to contact PSB President Wong Soon Ko for comment. With Mazar's exit, PSB is left with only one lawmaker, Selangau MP Baru Bian. The 1MDB audit report trial against Najib and Arul Kanda got interesting today as Madina Muhammad took to the stand as a prosecution witness. Former Auditor General Madina Muhammad testified that she was shocked to find out there were orders to amend the original audit report on 1MDB. Testifying at the Kuala Lumpur High Court, she expressed shock that there was an order to destroy the original copies of the audit report. The trial prosecution witness was giving her oral evidence during today's 1MDB audit report trial against Najib Abdul Razak and 1MDB's former CEO, Arun Kanda Kandasamy. During cross-examination by lead defense counsel, Muhammad Shafi Abdullah, she said she was shocked when National Audit Department officer Nor Salwani Muhammad informed her about the orders during a meeting in 2017. During previous proceedings before trial judge Muhammad Zaini Maslan on December 22 last year, Madina testified that she made the decision not to destroy the 1MDB audit report with watermark 09 following her meeting with Noor Salwani. Medina had testified then that Noor Salwani told her that there were two versions of the 1MDB audit report, with the watermark 09 version being the original unaltered version. Meanwhile, Medina also rubbished an allegation that she met Najib to be appointed as Auditor General in early 2016. Back in 2017, when she was appointed, C4 Central raised concerns over her qualifications as Auditor General. Prior to the appointment, Medina was Secretary General of the Education Ministry and has a PhD in Human Resources. She also used to be Secretary General of the Science, Technology and Innovation Ministry. Lim Guaneng has looked at how much the federal government has allocated to East Malaysia and he says it's proportionately smaller than Harapan's budget for Sabah and Sarawak previously. Former Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng said Sabah received a higher percentage of allocation under Pakatan Harapan's budget compared to Budget 2022. He said Sabah had received the highest allocation amongst all the states when Harapan was the federal government. Lim noted that the overall development expenditure in budget 2022 had been increased to over 75 billion ringgit from 56 billion ringgit in Harapan's budget 2020. However, Lim pointed out that Sabah still received the same amount of 5.2 billion ringgit for its development expenditure in the latest budget. He said DAP is not against the 11.4 billion ringgit allocation for the Bumiputra community, but there should be more and fairer allocations for Sabah, Sarawak, as well as all Malaysians. Lim claimed the budget 2022 ignores the unhappiness of non-Bumiputras 
that despite making up 30% of the population, they received only 0.1% of the budget 2022. During the debates on budget 2022 in the Dewan Rakyat, Sabahan MPs had raised their dissatisfaction with the insufficient allocation for Sabah and Sarawak. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Prasad. Thank you for watching.